we have already taken a look at something called Svelte. If you haven't seen that video, the link will be in the description below and also in the cards in the upper right corner. So basically, Svelte can be compared to frameworks and libraries like Vue, React or Angular. You know, the big three, but with one key difference, Svelte is actually not a framework or a library, at least not in a traditional sense. Svelte is a compiler. But as I've said, I talked about that more in the original Svelte video, so I'm not going to go into detail here. And also, let's pretend for the sake of the following explanation that Svelte is just another framework slash library like Vue React. So in this video, we are going to be talking about Sepper. Now, what is Sepper? Where Sepper is the official Svelte framework comparable to Next.js for React or Nuxt.js for Vue. It shares many of the same core principles as uh, like Nuxt or Next. And we're going to take a first look at it in this video. So according to the Svelte's official blog post for Sepper, there is a list of features that would make a perfect Node.js web application framework. And I'm just going to read through some of those. Uh, it should do server-side rendering for fast initial loads and no caveats around CEO. Uh, navigating to subsequent pages should be instantaneous. No compromise on performance. First-rate developer experience with hot, mo hot module re reloading and all the trimmings. Now Next.js comes close to all of that and I think the same can be said uh, for Vue's Next.js framework. But both of those has, have one big flaw and that is the size, because there is a minimal size for your application, no matter what it does. So there is an, an example in the same blog post, uh, just keep in mind that the post is from 2017, so that data may not be entirely correct. So basically, if you want to make a Next.js application that, uh, that just outputs hello world, that will cost you 66 kilobytes zipped. And this is because you have to bundle React and Next.js with your app. Now, the same application would cost you 7 kilobytes zipped in Sepper, and this is because of that key difference between Svelte and other traditional frameworks that I mentioned, mentioned at the beginning of this video. Svelte and Sepper are just compilers. So what you end up with uh, when you build your application is just optimized set of vanilla JavaScript instructions with no dependencies. Now, of course, size and performance is very important, uh, but it's not the only important thing. So I'm not going to claim that Svelte and Sepper are the solutions for all the world, world problems. There are some downsides, of course. The feature set is pretty limited compared to Vue or React. The community is much smaller, but growing rapidly. Uh, there is a big, uh, there is no big company back in Svelte or Sepper. Uh, there are no Svelte jobs and so on. Of course, all of that can and probably will change because Svelte has shed light on some pretty interesting and innovative approaches to building front-end frameworks, which hopefully others will adopt. We will see. So anyway, let's install Sepper and see what it looks like. Sepper is pretty easy to install, just like Svelte. You go to sepper.svelte.dev, go down here and you have this uh, command which you just run for rollup version. If you want a webpack version, then you would run this. And that's about it. So let's do that. I'm just going to paste this here and instead of uh, using my app, I'm just going to call my directory sepper. Okay, once this is done, you cd into sepper and then you do npm install. After all of that is done, you just do, uh, do npm run dev and uh, once this is loaded, once the server has started, you just go to a localhost 3000 and that web page should be waiting for you right here. Once you open it, you are greeted with this nice picture of Borat congratulating you on your great success for running three commands. And also it says uh, you can play with index.svelte to test live reloading. So uh, this installation didn't hurt at all, it was very simple. Now let's quickly check out what this demo application looks like. So we have our home page, so this is it. Then we have our about page 
and a blog page which is interesting uh, because if you click blog you get a list of posts and when you click on individual post uh, you go to that blog post you get this pretty URLs uh, and it, it will be interesting to see how this blog feature looks in the code and speaking of that let's open up our, our code editor and take a look under the hood I'm using Sublime Text in this video because it has a better support for Svelte files than PHPStorm that I usually use. Okay, so this is the file structure of Sapper. Now it looks a bit strange at first because of those Sapper underscore underscore Sapper and Cypress directories, but once you open the SRC directory, uh, you will see this, that the structure there is pretty similar to something that you would find in Next.js or Nux.js. But let's start at the beginning. So Sapper will hold all your various builds. We'll talk about this a bit later. Uh, Cypress is a testing framework and it's optional depending on if you are using tests or not. In the static uh, directory, uh, you would put your static assets like the picture of Borat or some kind of global CSS. Remember, Svelte will scope CSS that you write in your components to those specific components. So it's good to have some sort of global CSS that will style your sh shared elements and components so that you don't have to repeat yourself. And finally, you have the SRC folder in which you will be doing most of the work. As I've said, this is very similar to Nux.js. Uh, you have your components. Uh, this is where you, you would put, well, your components. And as you can see, we already have a nav.svelte component. Uh, so this is probably the navigation that we can see at the top of the page. Uh, then you would have your routes folder. Uh, and this folder is called pages in Nux.js. Uh, so whatever you put in here will get automatically gen generated routes depending on some rules. You can read about those rules on the official documentation page. So you would go right here, uh, svelte.dev and click learn Sapper. And then you would go to routing. So right here, this is the routing section. Uh, you will learn everything about routes, normal routes, dynamic routes, server routes uh, in this section right here. Uh, I expect that you would read the whole documentation on your own time. I mean, I know you will probably. Okay, so as I said, anything you put in here uh, will get automatically generated, uh, except for the files that start with underscore, like this error.svelte or layout.svelte. Files with underscore will be ignored by the router, but they are very useful nonetheless. For example, layout svelte is your default layout file. It's the same thing like layout's default dot view in Nux.js. This file will contain all the shared elements for your page, like header or footer. Uh, specifically, in this case, uh, you will get the navigation component, which we are importing right here. Uh, and content for each page will be generated in this slot right here. We also have error.svelte, uh, we file which is used for displaying errors, of course. And of course, you have about svelte and index svelte, which is the about page and the home page. As I've said, a blog folder is interesting because it contains a listing page for the blog, a template for displaying single blog post and also the content for those blog posts in the post.js file. So if I open it up, you would see that we have all the data for our posts. Uh, notice the underscore here. It is used here also so that the file posts.js or underscore post.js wouldn't get automatic routing. You also have these weird files that begin with uh, square braces slug. Uh, those are dynamic routes if they have that svelte extension or server routes if they have that JS extension like uh, slug.json.js file. Definitely read more about dynamic routes and server routes in the documentation that I just showed you because it, explain, uh, because it explains how this blog works and how you can make similar feature of your own. 
and it really isn't a long read. Then you have the client.js file, which is just the starting point of your application. Uh, you can of course add your own logic to it, uh, but what you see in it currently is the minimal code that you must have in that file. Server.js is your server configuration for something like Express.js or Polka. Uh, Server's workers, uh, worker.js will be very useful if you are building progressive web application. And lastly, you have the template HTML file, which contains your HTML boilerplate. Okay, now let's try to create our own page and add it to the navigation and see if it works as expected. So I'm just going to go to routes and create a new file here, which I'm going to call contact svelte. And I'm going to open up about svelte file and copy this to it. So this is svelte head. In Svelte head, you would put the metadata for your page and also the title of the page. Uh, this can of course be dynamic. It's very useful for SEO. If you want to put Facebook open graph tags in it, Twitter tags, meta descriptions, and so on. Uh, so I'm going to add that and also just do this H1. Uh, this is our contact page. Uh, so let's check this out if this works as expected. I'm just going to save this, go to the browser, and now we should be able to have the contact route available to us. So if I do contact, I get 404. Unfortunately, this does not work out of the box just yet. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go right here and do control C to quit out of my server and then run the server again. And if I refresh it, this now works, but it didn't work as expected. Maybe it is rollups fault, maybe it would work better with Webpack, but I'm not sure. So what you have to do is just turn off the server and start, start it again. Now let's just add that page to our navigation. So first of all, let's figure out how this navigation component works. Well, as you can see, we are calling the navigation component in layout.svelte file right here. And also we are defining segment variable that we will pass as a prop to our navigation component, as you can see here. So we have this nav segment. Segment is available to every layout file and it usually just gives you uh, the slug on the page you're currently on. We can test this out by adding segment above the navigation component just to see what it does. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it right here. And when I save it, uh, if I go to my browser, what you can see right now is contact right here because we are on a contact page. If I click on about, you would get about. If I click home, you would get undefined. Okay, great. Now that we understand segment, we can easily understand what's going on in the navigation component. So I'm just going to open it up. And as you can see, we are defining the segment right here also. Segment is great for changing the class of an element depending on what page you're currently on. So in the navigation, it will change selected, uh, which will let the user know which page is currently active or, you know, selected. So if we take a look at this, it says if the segment is undefined, then make this link P of class selected. And this is for our homepage. So for some reason, uh, you have to listen for undefined to select the homepage. And then if the segment is about, uh, then about will have selected and so on. So I would just paste this here and do something like uh, this. Okay, so I just changed this for all of this to be contact because if we go to the contact page, which is currently not here, but if we go contact, we will get the slug of contact right here. Okay, great. Now if I save this, go to the browser, 
we can see that we have a contact in our navigation. And also what, it is, what it is interesting here is that unlike Next.js, you don't have to use special uh, link component to link your pages. You could just use pure vanilla anchor tags. Okay, so I hope you have the understanding, at least the basic understanding of how, of how would you do navigation in Sapper. Okay, so let's say we're done with our application and we want to build it and put it on the server. Now you have two options right here. If your app is going to live on a Node.js server with, with something like Express.js or Polka, then you would run npm run build. So I'm going to exit out of here and do npm run build. Now this will generate fully dynamic app that must be run inside Node.js environment. Now I mentioned before this sapper directory right here and said it is used for our application builds. Our current build is in there. As you can see, we already have the dev, which is our development build. And also we have this build folder that we just built right now. So as you can see, you have the client right here, many files, many JS files. Uh, you have the server, build JSON, index JS, and so on. I'm not, I'm not going to go into this. And as you can see, this is a full on Node.js application. Now, as I've said, there are two build options. The other option will build a static site for you, something like we did in building static sites with Nux.js, but right out of the box. And you can put that site on almost any kind of server because it will be just pure HTML and CSS site with a little bit of JS sprinkled in. To make that kind of build, you would just run npm run export. Okay, so now in our separate directory, we have this export right here. And as you can see, every page has its own folder. And in the blog, you have subfolders. And if you go to this index file, you can see that we have our content hard coded in the HTML files. And let's just test this out by running it in a PHP server. So I would uh, CD into separate export and then you can just do php uh, s localhost 8000 and now if you go to the localhost 8000 you would get this page but running from a php server right everything works so how do you decide if you would use build or export? There is actually a great paragraph about uh, just that in the documentation. So it says the basic rule is this, for an app to be exportable, any two users hitting the same page of your app must get the same content from the server. In other words, any app that involves user sessions or authentication is not a candidate for a separate export. Uh, note that you can still export apps with dynamic routes like our SRC and so on. Example from earlier, a uh, separate export will intercept fetch requests made inside preload so the data served from whatever will be captured. So I hope this is clear. So anything that will require user authentication, profiles, user areas, and so on, is not viable for exporting. You would have to build full Node.js up for that. Okay, so that would be it for this quick look at Sapper, but I'm sure you will meet Svelte and Sapper again on this channel in the future for sure. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.